and welcome to The Pilates Show, where we explore creative and innovative Pilates tips and techniques to help deepen the skill level of the movement educator while having fun. I'm your host, Casey Marie Hertz, and today we're gonna to be talking about creative propping. So today we're gonna to be going back to basics a little bit and talking about pelvic clocking. So this is one of our kind of pre-Pilates beginner skill building techniques that almost everyone that's gone through some sort of Pilates training knows about. So I just got done teaching um, mat one and mat two, and there are so many amazing questions that come up about how can we get clients to start to understand that they can move their pelvis multi-directional on you know, stable femurs without a whole bunch of tension and then without compensating through the whole of the spine. So I came up with a little bit of creative tactile cues to help our clients feel and understand what we're asking them to do while they're doing their clocking. So again, I say back to basics, but clocking is one of those just pelvic spinal health things that if you do it every day and do it well, it keeps you out of a lot of trouble. It helps to get you out of bad habits. And especially for us teachers that are on our feet all day on hardwood floors, um, it's something that's really needed to help unwind the spine too. So don't, don't just say it's beginner stuff. You should always be doing this type of work. So I have an overball here and I've really deflated it quite a bit to, I don't know, like a fifth of how big it could be. Um, but that's exactly what I want because I'm going to take this gorgeous, warm, smart spine and place it on top. Now, if you don't have a smart spine, uh, I've literally done this at home. I took my heating pad and I placed it on the overball for just a little while on a low setting. When I say a little while, like, a few minutes, okay, low setting. That heated up the ball, which was really nice, but this is much better to have um, this surface area. So I'm gonna lay down, lift the pelvis up, and then I'm gonna place this warm smart spine cervical disc on the ball underneath my pelvis. So first of all, what this does is it gets people to start thinking about their back body and feeling their back body. This doesn't happen very often. A lot of times when we do directional cues in clocking, we do it from the front, the pubic bone, the belly button, and the ASIS bones. But when you cue the body from the back, it's a much rounder sensation and people can actually access these points from a deeper place in their body. Also, having that little bit of an overball is really nice. I'm sure you've seen it a million times and so many from so many different teachers that creating this fulcrum to do these multi-directional movements, very important. So what I tell people is you want your sitting bones to reach down towards the warmth at the edge, and then you want your low back and sacrum to reach to the uh, warmth at the top. And so it's this directional of bottom of the pelvis to the warmth, top of the pelvis to the warmth. So you're creating the vector of movement on the back body. You can also do one side of the pelvis wraps around to the warmth, and then the other side of the pelvis wraps around to the warmth. So as they're doing these gentle mobility exercises, the connective tissue of the back of the pelvis is reaping the incredible benefits for letting go of any kind of global muscle tension, but then it's also igniting the core body from the back. That's what that heat does. Now, if you have somebody that's going through the clocking and they can't help but to try to drive it from the shoulders, you can always take these little half green spiky balls that we have when our green spiky balls are done, we just cut them in half. You can place it at the back of the shoulder girdle, have them continue to feel like they're dropping their sternum between those and do these gentle mobilization techniques through the pelvis. So this really helps people get that nice movement just in the pelvis, starting to understand a little bit of lumbopelvic mobility, getting that movement, that kind of differentiated movement from femurs and pelvis, realizing that the upper body and lower body are connected, but we wanna have control in lots and lots of different ways, and especially 
cueing clocking from the back body instead of the front. That's all for today. If you have any questions or observations that you'd like to see answered on an upcoming episode, you can comment below on Facebook, Twitter, or a forum. Thanks so much for watching and never stop learning.